Mexico is facing a second Donald Trump presidency, and few countries can match its experience as a target of Trump's rhetoric. There have been threats to close the border, impose tariffs and even send U.S. forces to fight Mexican drug cartels if the country doesn't do more to stem the flow of migrants and drugs. That's not to mention what mass deportations of migrants who are in the U.S. illegally could do to remittances, the money sent home by migrants, that have become one of Mexico's main sources of income. But as much as this second round looks like the first round, when Mexico pacified Trump by quietly ceding to his immigration demands, circumstances have changed, and not necessarily for the better. Today, Mexico has in Claudia Scheinbaum a somewhat stern leftist ideologue as president, and Trump is not known for handling such relations well. Back in 2019, Mexico's then-president Andres Manuel López Obrador was a charismatic, plain-spoken, folksy leader who seemed to understand Trump, because both had a transactional view of politics, you give me what I want, I'll give you what you want. The two went on to form a chummy relationship. But while López Obrador was forged in the give-and-take politics of the often corrupt former ruling party, the Institutional Revolutionary Party, or PRI, Scheinbaum grew up in a family of leftist activists and got her political experience in radical university student movements. Scheinbaum made a point of being one of the first world leaders to call Trump on Thursday to congratulate him after the election, but during the call Trump did two things that may say a lot about how things will go. First, Scheinbaum said, Trump quickly brought up the border to remind her there were issues there. Then he asked Scheinbaum to send his greetings to López Obrador, with whom Trump said he had a very good relationship. That might suggest that Trump believes that López Obrador, the new president's political mentor, is still in charge, a view shared by some analysts. Not everything has changed for the worse, cross-border trade has topped $800 billion per year and U.S. companies are more dependent than ever on Mexican plants. But the U.S. Mexico-Canada Trade Agreement, or USMCA, is coming up for review, and Mexico has made legal changes that Trump could seize on to demand a renegotiation of parts of the deal. Scheinbaum has suggested Mexico won't give in even if backed into a corner. But standing up hasn't worked particularly well before. You see it, the criminal invasion horrible some horrible deathly people mexico has been the victim of donald trump's harshest criticism since his first term in office when he accused mexicans of bringing drugs and crime across the border this time around in trump's second term china is likely to take some of the heat but the focus remains firmly on mexico because of two key issues stemming the flow of migrants across the border and bringing jobs back to the united states In Trump's first term, Mexico had a charismatic, folksy president who was knew the art of the deal. He was able to negotiate an agreement where Mexico would agree to accept migrants deported back across the border even if they weren't Mexicans. And the United States turned a blind eye towards Mexico's faulty compliance in the war on drugs. <laughs> Things have changed this time around. Mexico is now the United States' largest trading partner with $800 billion in cross-border trade every year. Mexican officials hope that economic interdependence will be enough to stem, save off the threats of border closures or tariffs. But this time around, Mexico's new president definitely doesn't know the art of the deal. She's a leftist ideologue, and it's not clear how Trump will respond to that. I got it.
escuchar todos los programas del bienestar del presidente López Obrador. ¡Viva México! ¡Viva México! ¡Viva México! Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov on Monday rejected a report by the Washington Post newspaper saying that Russia's president and U.S. president-elect Donald Trump had held a phone call last Thursday as completely untrue and pure fiction. Peskov told his daily conference call with reporters the report was just false information. Asked about whether the Kremlin is expecting an escalation of the conflict in Ukraine, Peskov said, nothing can't be ruled out given that European leaders continue to seek the strategic defeat of our country. He was speaking following reports that French President Emmanuel Macron and UK Prime Minister Keir Starmer are planning to try and convince Washington to allow strikes deep inside Russia with storm shadow missiles. The dynamics of the special military operation are well understood by the military. They understand well what is happening, and, perhaps, it is also important to note that no types of weapons are capable of changing this dynamic, he added. И, собственно, также на Валдае хочу вам напомнить, именно Путин сказал, что э, и Шольц, и Макрон, они сами ушли со связи и не хотят разговаривать. Поэтому э, здесь, э, ну, если они говорят, что какие-то сигналы пойдут, значит, их надо дождаться. Пока не было никаких. Мы видим, мы видим определенную нервозность, э, всяческие опасения европейцев. Э, в связи с избранием господина Трампа президентом США. Но как дальше будет выстраиваться линия с обеих сторон, мы будем наблюдать. Европейские руководители продолжают свою линию. И, собственно, они продолжают добиваться стратегического поражения нашей страны, Российской Федерации. Мы же, в свою очередь, продолжаем специальную военную операцию до достижения всех поставленных целей. Динамика в проведении специальной военной операции э, военным хорошо понятна. Они хорошо понимают, что происходит. Наверное, еще важно, важно отметить, что э, никакие отдельные виды вооружений изменить эту динамику уже не в состоянии.